good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever it is to wherever you're at. 91 Cab GT coming back at you, YouTube. Uh, this is a video in response to Project Farms HHO experiment that he just recently did. Um, I wanted to go into more of the reason why the results came out the way they did. Uh, first off, kudos to Project Farm. Um, he got it right, as always, because he follows the scientific method. He tries to eliminate the variables as much as possible, and that gives you a more consistent and more accurate outcome. So, so the HHO. So what happened with that? Why is it that the engines that he tested on, the efficiency dropped? And here's the reason why. One simple thing. Both the engines that he tested on, both his Suburban and the generator, were fuel injected. They were not carbureted. They were fuel injected, which means they have a feedback fuel delivery system. They have oxygen sensors in the exhaust. Um, so as the air fuel ratio changes, um, the computer is going to try to keep that air fuel mixture in the stoichiometric range uh, as close to 14.7 to 1 as possible. Um, that's where you get roughly the best burn, um, roughly the best emissions is going to be in that narrow range. 14.7 to 1. That basically means there's 14.7 parts of air to one part of fuel. Now, HHR, HHR, <laughs> not the car. <laughs> HHO is hydrogen made from electrolysis. Now, when you do electrolysis with water, you not only get hydrogen, but you also get oxygen. So you are injecting the oxygen and the hydrogen into the intake on these fuel injected vehicles. When you inject more oxygen, you change that stoichiometric range. You actually make it a little bit leaner because you're injecting more oxygen into things. So the oxygen sensor is going to see that leaner air fuel mixture and is going to add fuel to it. That's going to make it not be quite as efficient. Now, if you had a carburetor that was set just really great on the stoichiometric range and then added HHO to it, there's a really good chance that it would actually improve the economy. Why is that? Well, when hydrogen goes into an engine, hydrogen is a gas, is a vapor. Um, whenever fuel is injected into an engine, it is a liquid. Now, as Mythbusters has proven, liquid does not burn. Vapor burns. So a carburetor tries to atomize that fuel. It tries to change it as much as possible from a liquid to a vapor. Doesn't do that great of a job with it. That's why fuel injection does a lot better as far as economy. Now, if you're just at a steady cruise, you can make a carburetor be just as efficient as fuel injection. Uh, fuel injection does a lot better with the transients as well as with different changes in the atmosphere, be it elevation changes or humidity changes, uh, air density changes, all of that, fuel injection does a better job. That's why if you, say, buy a carburetor four-wheeler and have it on the coast, and then you decide to go up to Colorado in the mountains where you're really high elevation and go ride, guess what? The spark plugs are going to foul out because there's not enough air in the atmosphere. The air is a lot thinner up there, so the engine is having to work harder to pull that air into the engine. So you really need to lean out the air-fuel mixture in order to maintain that stoichiometric air-fuel ratio. Much the same if you buy a four-wheeler up in Denver that is already tuned for the higher altitude and you bring it down to, say, the coast and you go riding it. 
you might end up burning a valve or having some other major issues because now it's running too lean. Lean is mean. <laughs> lean is also dangerous uh, whenever it comes to the lifespan of an engine. So when you've got that hydrogen going into the engine and that spark plug ignites, that hydrogen ignites very, very, very quickly. If you have the fuel going into an engine via carburetor or fuel injection, either one, when the spark plug ignites, the flame front does not propagate nearly as quickly. The combustion process itself is not as quick because you do have some liquid droplets of fuel in the combustion chamber. If those liquid droplets are able to be atomized by the heat, by the compression, uh, then they will eventually burn off. But not all of it does. That's why cars have catalytic converters. They are there, they're designed to catch the hydrocarbons, which are unburned fuel, from the combustion process and burn them off so that way they don't go in the atmosphere. What HHO does on carburetor vehicles is it helps to burn off those excess hydrocarbons. So in those vehicles, HHO can be beneficial and you can actually see a slight mile per gallon increase, a slight power increase. Now, are we talking about 30, 40, 50 horsepower? No, it's a small increase, but it is an increase nonetheless. Now, here's a downfall to HHO. Because it does burn hot, because the vapors do burn very quickly, unfortunately, a byproduct of a hot combustion process is you increase your nitrates of oxide, NOx. That is the <clears throat> emission that contributes to smog, to air pollution, to acid rain, as it used to be in the 80s. Um, we always heard about acid rain in the 80s, and then it just kind of phased out. Well, NOx contributes to that. So there's good and there's bad to HHO. HHO does not necessarily work very good on a fuel-injected engine. It just doesn't. And that's why you saw the slight decrease in run times on the generator. There was a very small change in the air fuel ratio. So the computer was injecting just a little bit more fuel to try to maintain that stoichiometric air fuel ratio. And that's why you had a little bit less run time. It's just the way it is. Um, so Project Farm got it right. This is just a little bit more of an in-depth explanation as to why his results came out the way it was. So hopefully it didn't get too technical, you guys. Uh, I'm just a school bus driver. What do I know? <laughs> y'all have a good one. I hope y'all felt that this was informative in some way and not over too many people's heads. Uh, love y'all. God bless you. Have a good day.